Hey guys, what's going on and welcome to this week's weekly performance review. So I'm going to start this and I'm going to do this every week. It's slightly different to the weekly review because the weekly review is where I talk about what actually happened on the charts, whereas the weekly performance review is exactly what it says it is. It is my weekly performance and I just review like how I went and stuff. So as you will see soon, I have my p and I have the pair I trade, when I traded it, what strategy of like that I used, the confluences, I also have like a little picture of the chart when I did trade, and I also have some notes. So we're going to dive into this and see how my trading went this week. Alright, so as you can see here, this is my weekly chart which I just started, and Honestly, for election week, I think I did pretty good. This is the first time I ever traded during elections uh, because this is only my first year of trading. So I was a little bit scared, not going to lie, after everything I heard. Some of the traders which I follow said they weren't even going to trade this week. I've heard others say they weren't going to trade until the end of the year. And I was thinking like, hey, maybe they're, you know, they're playing the long-term game. So why would they put themselves in a position where they're more likely to lose trades because of volatility and stuff. It's a smart move to make honestly, but the difference between them and me is I have a lot to learn and I haven't made so much money in trading or anything, whereas they have, so they can afford to be like, hey, I'm just going to take the next few months off, let it play out, and then start trading again. So let's go, let's get into this. The first trade here that I made on the second, so I'm pretty sure that was the Monday starting elections. I have a trade here which I have already opened up, but before we we'll get into this, I'll just quickly show you guys that I obviously like to trade the break and the retest of trend lines. I made a loss straight up here, even using the strategy because it does that happens. And I have another loss here which I didn't actually use the strategy, but I still did have confluences here. And this is a big mistake that I used to make a lot, but we'll get into that one this time. So let's get into the first trade. Uh, if you've watched my vlog, then you would see that I did take this trade because what happened was I saw price make a couple touches to the 618, sorry, not the 618, the 7000 level, which is a major level on the Aussie dollar. And I pretty much I thought what price was going to do was it was going to come up, retest the trend line and drop. So I thought with this week here, where is it, this one here, that first of all, price broke the trend line, it retested the 7000 level, made multiple touches, and I thought it was just going to make a retracement up to either the moving averages here, or to a Fibonacci zone, or the trend line, which is here. I placed a decent stop loss, probably just above here somewhere, and yeah price came up and took me out. So there was a few things which I did do wrong in this trade. Let's see if I noted it down in the notes. And yeah, so I should have waited for the hourly price to close. Now, if you remember in the video that, you know, I just posted, this was on, what was it? Is this the 15 minute? Yeah, this is the 15 minute. On the hour candle, it was playing around like a Fibonacci area. I did, I should have really waited for that to close. So that's a mistake I made and that's a mistake I made sure to write down and be like, hey, always look at the higher time frames. And I feel like I did that well this week after um, I stuffed up this trade. So yeah, should have waited for price to close. Now on the second trade and the third trade, these were re-entries to that first trade. So my habit is I tend to know where price is going, I just don't have good entries. So these two trades were retakes of the first trade which I made, essentially trying to catch that downwards move after the retracement. So my confluences remained the same, on the 15 minutes I saw the moving averages cross correctly, price was below both moving averages, lower lows and lower highs were being made and price retested resistance and the 0.5 fib. As you can see it's exactly the same confluences as the first one because essentially they were the same trade but with better entries. So this is the first trade. And now these are the second ones. So I got spiked out here and what I saw was price started ranging a little bit, came down and that's pretty much where I saw price be like, okay, look, we've broken below the trend line. There's four touches with big strong movements to the downside. So I entered two trades. I entered this first one a little bit beforehand. 
Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense because it says there's a wick that took me out, but the thing is that wick was from the previous... Well, what is this? Is this on the 15 minute as well? Yeah, so pretty much I didn't. I entered on the 5 minute, so it says I got spiked out. I didn't. I entered before, like once the spike started making its way down. As you can see, I entered after that, so that's why that's what it looks like. So I entered both these trades. I must say the first trade was a little risky just because price had not closed below both moving averages and that's sort of a part of my... I really like to see price below both moving averages and this is where I made the re-enter because you know everything was going well it did uh, touch the trend lines it was making its way down and then price did drop below the moving averages and it touched them three times so then I entered short on that and I closed both those trades out at the 7,000. Price did continue to drop lower, but because of the volatility in the market, I was like, hey, significant level, I don't want to play around without too much. So once it dropped there, I took out both trades and kept it nice and safe. So yeah, that's why you can see here that, you know, both my wins were a little bit smaller than my losses, but it's fine because in the end, we were in a profit after those two trades. Now, I made a third trade here. So it was a bounce from the top of the channel, both fibs, or it retraced into both fibs. Uh, my moving average was crossed correctly and price was below both. Price closed below the 7,000 level. Okay, so let's see what this trade, that's the third one, no, fourth one. Okay, so this is what happened. What I'm seeing is price is in a downwards channel at this point. Touched it once, dropped, came back up made a sh very strong push to the downside from the top of the channel. As you can see, the 0.618 and the 0.5 Fib levels got touched and rejected. Uh, price was in like, I mean, it closed below both moving averages and both moving averages were crossed to the downside and price did close below the 7,000 level. And that was one of the key things for me. I'm like, okay, if it closed below the 7,000 with such a strong push and all the confluences are lining up, then that seems good, right? Well, in a sense, yes, but in another sense, it didn't follow my strategy. I have nothing in my trading plan which goes into anything about trading from the top of a channel pushing down. Nor does this follow the strategy where it's talking about break of horizontal levels. Yes, it broke a horizontal level, but as you can see, there was no clear you know, retest or any structure to show that price is making its way down. If anything, this was like a tweezer bottom here and yeah, so, and I made my stop loss very tight. If I had placed a stop loss above structure, so probably up here, that would have meant, hey, the price would have to make it to the top of the trend line, break the trend line, break the previous Fibonacci and close above both moving averages. That would have been a valid exit for me, like a valid stop loss, but I was greedy and I placed a stop loss just above the 7,000 because I was thinking, hey, significant level, surely it's not going to push through, right? But as you can see, it did. So that was the second loss and you can see here that I kept this, uh, the loss pretty small. So that's always good. Any notes on that one? Yeah, so traded too early because I, if we go back to look at it, Usually I wouldn't trade unless price from here broke through the horizontal level and the trend line came back and retested somewhere before dropping. So that was an early trade. Um, yeah, these two were good trades, early trade. So let's go to the next trade which I made on the 4th. So what do we have here? Break and retest of the trend line again. I love trading this. So there was a Fib retracement on the 15 minute time frame and the 2 hour, so that's important as well, having Fibonacci retracements on multiple time frames, just more confluences and shows you that it's a stronger um, retracement and more likely to reverse. Um, so to continue to whatever side it was going, the EMAs were crossed correctly and price was abo above both MAs. So okay, this is probably going in long I would assume. Yep. So, what, what's going through my head here? I saw price break, so by the way, this line here is the trend line. So, price broke through the trend line, found its way to the next level. And that's what I like to see. I always draw my charts up, if you look at my forecasts and stuff. When price is going to break a level, I always look for the next level above because price doesn't just break randomly float around and then drop back down. It usually likes to come up to these levels. 
price broke and I saw this level come up, then, you know, rejected it twice with a very strong bearish candle, came down and I was looking for it again. I'm like, okay, price is most likely going to break, probably form a double top somewhere around this level before retracing and then pushing right back up once it can't, you know, once it starts making higher highs and higher lows. So that's exactly what I saw happen. Price broke, duh. Then I was like, okay, let's look for a double top. So price did break the trend line again. Not really a double top, but as you can see, it did respect this resistance. Came down and there we go. There was a higher low being made. Price touched the moving averages. Moving averages were crossed correctly and price was above them both. So that's always good. Price had just touched the 0.38 two level here on the retracement from here to here. So that was enough confluences. Now usually I wouldn't have taken the buy because I'm like, well, what if price respects this moving average, I mean this resistance again and just drops. But I just had a good feeling about this and I've been seeing this happen more and more often. I think it's just coming with experience that even though price, like the resistance was respected here, there's, if it doesn't want to drop, then there's a high chance that it's going to pop and rise, even though, you know, there's the wall for it to break through. It tends to break through, and when it does, it flies. So I took this trade, and yeah, I got stopped out early just because this is where I wanted to take my profits, but price kept making its way up. And I wasn't too concerned about trying to milk the trade as much as I could, just because election week, price could do whatever it wants. So I was like, oh, we'll take it here for a good amount of pips. Was that, 20 pips? Yeah, about 20 pips. And on the next trade, so the price and the moving averages were aligned correctly. Um, so when I say the price and the moving averages align correctly, what I mean is if I'm going for a buy, the green is above the red and then the price is above those both. If I'm going for the sell, then the green is below the red and then the price is above those, uh, below those both. That's what I mean by aligned correctly. Um, then the Fib retracement into a 0.382 and it tested both moving averages. So let's see here. Okay, never mind. This is my live charts. So <laughs> this one here. So yeah, looks like the same trade. It actually looks very similar to the... Is that the same trade? Okay, that trade that I was talking about was actually the most recent trade I was talking about. Um, <laughs> the last trade I took. This was the trade I was supposed to be talking about on this one here. So... Here we go. Okay, this, this one's pretty simple. We saw a break and a retest of a horizontal level. Price touched the resistance. I mean, well, it was a resistance now support. It bounced off the support, bounced off moving averages, created a higher low here. And yeah, once I saw this bullish candle here engulf maybe two, nearly three candles, I was like, yep, okay, we're coming up because we had just broken a trend line and then on from the trend line we had just broken a small resistance and just rock it and fly through there so I took that trade i was expecting this trade to reach up to the next level but i wasn't too sure i was a little bit nervous because of elections so i just closed the trade there and yeah price did make it to that level and a little bit above i could have caught a lot more pips but i'm happy with that i'm not being greedy this week i'm just taking what i can get and learning as much as i can so yeah, sorry for that confusion by the way with these two trades, but essentially they were the same thing. So um, yeah, still a break and a retest of the trend line, but with this one I used the this one I used the confirmation of price breaking a smaller resistance and retest using that as a launch pad. So yeah. Overall, good week. We'll come over to the side and look at the totals. This is my first ever $1,000 a week, or like more, so yeah, my more than two, more than $1,000 a week, and I caught 50 something pips, 55 pips. I'm really happy about this week, especially because it was elections. I feel like I traded well this week, because knowing that the elections were on, I had to be a lot more careful, a lot more cautious, so I wasn't being very greedy, I was just trading from a much more grounded space I feel and I was definitely putting more effort into each individual trade the patience was there the mindset was there 
So, election week has taught me a lot, actually, and I feel like there's a lot of lessons which I learnt this week, which I will carry into my everyday trading. So, it's only up from here, so I'm pretty happy. Anyways, that's it for the weekly performance review. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is the first one, so I will try and find changes that I can make which will help this video just be a little bit better, but, you know, let me know in the comments what you thought about this video, any changes you would like to see, and yeah, I will try to implement those changes if I feel like it's appropriate. But besides that, that's the end of this video. I will catch you in next week one, next week's one. So enjoy the weekend and yeah.